Hey what's up, I'm Esodan from Latte Night Raiders. The guide I have for you today describes a method that's a bit more common than the KC pushing strategy I described in my last raid guide. My main group, LNR, has been using this since right after the launch of Wing 3, and since then we've seen it used in the Elitist raiding tournament and some random pugs here and there. In essence, you can forego having a dedicated tower team entirely, as a chrono can just drop a portal on each of the five towers and port everyone up. First, let me discuss some of the traits I use and why I find them useful. Keep in mind that I'm dropping Domination or Illusions for Chaos, which may adversely affect your ability to buff the group at the end. But I compensate with a few other tactics. This method gives you a very quick turnaround with the five towers, so you should have plenty of time to get the achievement even with some quickness and alacrity downtime. You can drop some defensive traits or even the whole trait line if you are really careful, but I wouldn't recommend that for beginners. In Inspiration, I usually take Medic's Feedback just for a bit of Reflex, Restorative Illusions for Emergency Condi Clears, and either Illusionary Inspiration for some SOI procs, or Temporal Enchanter for an extra edge on towers. Chronomancer remains exactly the same, but I suppose you could take Seize the Moment depending on how you tackle McLeod at the end. Since I'm doing nothing but portals and gliding for about 80% of the fight, I don't really care about min-maxing my party buffs. Instead, I drop Domination for Chaos and run the following traits. First, I take Master of Manipulation to reduce the cooldown of Mimic to minimize downtime between the 3rd and 4th towers when my group is doing the achievement. For more defensive option, you could take Descent into Chaos instead for some fall damage reduction. Next, I take Mirror of Anguish to help out my group on the towers, since incoming knockbacks could immediately be mirrored back and potentially save a few squishy teammates, depending on the group. Finally, I take Bountiful Disillusionment so that whenever I shatter, I grant myself stability. This is something that really comes in handy when I'm doing towers. Let me start by showing you my method for navigating the cave in case some beginner chronos wanted some pointers. I don't really focus on optimizing this part. Some chronos use fiery greatswords to do the cave faster, but I've got a decent method that works pretty well. Essentially, I rely on shield blocks and shatters to mitigate incoming damaging conditions. I end up skipping one of the waterfalls at the end and just heal through the damage. Now that I've reached the first tower, I'll notify the group via voice chat that I'm about to drop a portal. I use the mushroom to get onto the first tower, shatter immediately to gain stability, drop my portal, and glide off. Notice that I'm using super speed just to give myself a bit of an edge, but it's certainly not necessary. Once I reach the zerg, I cast continuous split immediately after casting mimic, which should allow me to do three portals in quick succession. Once everyone except the babysitter and backward person take the portal, the tower should be capped in anywhere between 1 to 2 seconds. Glyph of Tides from the Druid and your own focus pools can help capture faster and help mitigate some incoming CCs. I make sure that I leave the tower as soon as possible and make my way under the next tower so I don't gain unnecessary aggro. If too many melee mobs come after you, it's better to just glide down and wait for the next ley line. As soon as the next ley line is up, you should be in position to glide into it from the tower or from the bridge connecting the towers. If you glide from the bridge, make sure you're close enough to the first tower to clear the edge of the next tower, or you'll bump into the side. You can now drop another portal and return to the group. Use your mimic this time, which should allow one final portal for the third tower before you have to wait for cooldowns. Immediately head toward the next bridge, as it's really easy to aggro white mantle from this tower. If you have a minion and no more than one melee mob come after you, I recommend fighting them off, but if more than two are aggroed, it's best to either head down to help with wargs or keep gliding on the ley lines while you wait. Once the next ley line is up, you'll simply port everyone up and stay down this time. My recommendations for quickly building up alacrity for Mimic and Portal is to use all your shatters and then find a mob to attack with your shield blocks. As soon as your portal cooldown nears about 25 seconds, with enough alacrity 30 seconds, you can start gliding to the 4th tower. I highly recommend using stealth gliding when you move past towers. Keep in mind that once a mob aggros you, it doesn't matter if you're stealth or not because they will keep tracking you, so make sure to apply stealth ahead of time. Drop a port and proceed to the zerg. Use the opening I use to glide to them, as this will allow you to avoid accidentally gliding into the incoming ley line or potentially shards from the tower. Portal everyone up and then head back down immediately. Keep in mind that your group's pace is highly dependent on skillful movement on the babysitter's part. The more confident they are, the easier it is to do the achievement. My chrono guide simply eliminates the tower team as a bottleneck and allows 8 people to zerg and clear ahead. 
After the fourth tower, I normally head straight for the fifth front ward and slow it down a bit on my way to the top of the stairway. I then drop portal and glide off immediately, assuming the babysitter pulls to the fifth circle in time, which they should. If for some reason your babysitter is falling behind, you should have time for one more round on the ley lines and be able to drop a portal on the fifth tower with mere seconds remaining. Once everyone's ported up, they can immediately go back down and start doing the end boss. Like I said, the 8 minute achievement is highly dependent on your babysitter, but not having to dedicate people to towers certainly helps you optimize your attempt. Click here for a POV from an achievement run we did this summer, so you'll be able to see my method in its entirety. Keep in mind I've made a few optimizations since then, but I essentially do the same thing today. If you have ideas for raid guides, please leave me some feedback and suggestions for future raid videos. For the next few months, if I don't have any specific guides to offer, you'll get to see some speedruns here and there, as well as some low-man POVs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.